This presentation will take you through the basics you need to understand in order to find quality information in the social sciences. By the end of the session we will have covered how to plan a search strategy, the range of information resources available to you and what they're good for, how to search summon and where to go for help in the future. Here are some of the points you need to bear in mind when planning a search strategy. First of all, it may seem to be just one more time consuming thing to do, but be reassured it will be time well spent. A little time planning ahead and thinking about your search in detail before you go to the search engines will mean a shorter and more focused results list, therefore less time wasted going through irrelevant results. Imagine you're going on a journey. What do you need to do to plan your trip well? Step one is to think about the scope of your research. How wide do you need to cast the net? Consider which databases, search engines and websites you need to search to find the right kind of information and how far back in time you need to go. Make a checklist to ensure that you don't forget anything. Step two is to identify your key concepts and search terms for your topic. If you need some help with this, brainstorming with someone else on your course can get you started. We will also go into this process in more detail later in the presentation. Step three is to think about alternative terminology or synonyms that you need to consider for your search. You can use a thesaurus for inspiration or do a search using the first keywords that occur to you and then read through some of the articles you find and jot down alternative terms which come up. Step four, once you have done a search, is to review your results critically. You can then revise your search terms or parameters such as date range if needed. Too many results? Adding in more specific search terms with AND will reduce your results list. Or you may want to scale back your date range. Too few results? Considering alternative synonyms or related terms and adding them to your search with OR will broaden it, as will increasing the date range. Step 5 is to keep a record of your results. There are various ways to do this. In Summon, you can email links to articles to yourself by placing them in a folder and choosing the email option when you click into the folder. It's a good idea to copy and paste the search terms you used and add some information about other search restrictions, for example the date range you included. Another good way to save your search results is to set yourself up with a RefWorks account by clicking on the RefWorks link at the top right hand corner of the Summon results page. To keep track of all searches you've done on Summon and other databases, a search diary involving a simple table in Word will do the job. It's a good idea to record the date you did searches, which resource you searched, search terms you used, any restrictions you applied, and some information about the results achieved with that search and where they're saved. Keeping this search diary up to date will enable you to ensure that you've been systematic in your searching and to spot any gaps in your search strategy. Have you used all the keywords you thought of in all your searches? There are some tips and tricks which can help you when searching Summon and databases. The first is phrase searching. Simply putting double quote marks around the phrase you want to search on ensures that all results contain the exact phrase, not just the two words in separate locations. This really increases the relevance level of your search results. Truncation is another really useful feature of most databases and search engines. This allows you to search on the stem of a word by adding a character to the stem, usually an asterisk. This is what someone uses. Wildcards can be really useful too. This just means putting a symbol in the middle of a word to replace just one letter. For example, to search for the UK or US spellings of organisation, someone uses a question mark for this. One word of warning. Do not try to combine phrase searching with truncation or a wildcard, as the two functions don't work together. If you're not sure which characters to use for truncation or wildcard searching in a particular database, just check the help screen. Now we're going to work through an example of how to get from an assignment title to a set of useful keywords to start your search. Let's take the question, 
Why are women prisoners more likely to self-harm than men? Our first task is to pick out the really meaningful key concepts from this sentence and discard the irrelevant connecting words which we can't search on. The key concepts of this question are women, prison and the phrase self-harm. Now we need to take these key concepts and think of other words which mean the same thing, which an author may have used when writing a book or article which is of interest to you. Starting with the key word woman, one obvious synonym is female, and it's important to remember that not all databases search for the plural automatically, so you may need to search for women too. Useful synonyms for prison are custody or detention. Taking the key concept self-harm, synonyms could be self-injury and cutting, or even better we can use cut asterisk to find all variations of the word. Don't forget, if you have trouble thinking of synonyms, you can always brainstorm with a friend, use a thesaurus, or read a few articles on the topic for inspiration. Now we can put together a string of all our search terms using AND to join together our key concepts and OR to connect our synonyms. Putting brackets around each key concept enables Summon and other search engines to do the search correctly. It's important when you're researching a topic that you use the right information source for the job. The next few slides will take you through the attributes and the drawbacks of different information sources. Books are a starting point for much of the research you will do for assignments. You will use print books on the shelves in the library and also electronic books. They're great for giving an overview of a subject, but be aware that currency can be an issue as it takes a long time to write, edit and produce a book, so some are already going out of date by the time they arrive on our shelves. They may also not be detailed enough for your assignment. Academic journals are regular publications, similar to magazines, which focus on a particular subject. They are particularly good for finding out about recent research. The best quality journals are what we call peer-reviewed, which means they are critically assessed by a panel of experts before being accepted for publication. Recent journal articles will give you the most current scholarship available on a subject as the publication time for an article is much shorter than for a book. Journals give you high quality information which is very focused on a specific question but they are not great if you want a broad overview of a subject. Conference proceedings are the output following an academic conference. The advantages of conference proceedings are that they present the very latest research. Drawbacks are that they assume a level of expertise and that research may not be finished. Newspapers, while not scholarly sources, can still provide useful background information and have the virtue of being bang up to date. Articles from broadsheets such as The Guardian, Financial Times, Independent, Telegraph and Times are the best ones to use as the quality of journalism will be higher than in the tabloids. In all cases, be aware of any political bias. Web pages can be a minefield when it comes to writing an academic assignment. As anyone can set up their own web page if they have a domain name, it's very easy for people without any expertise or academic credentials to make themselves sound authoritative. Currency can be an issue too. The web can be bang up to date, but it's hard to check this. Web pages are obviously very easy to access, but accuracy, reliability and political bias are all potential problems. To be on the safe side, it's best to stick to known organisations with a reputation beyond their website, for example the BBC, government departments, non-governmental organisations and professional bodies. As well as being more authoritative, these organisations are more likely to keep their web pages up to date. So where do you find the books and articles you need for your assignments? Your first port of call will usually be Summon, which is our own search engine here at the University of Huddersfield. A separate video is available on these pages which will take you step by step through the search process on Summon. Other online resources and help are available on your subject guide. 
To find the guide relevant to your course, click on the Library Subject Guide link on the front page of Summon, select Human and Health Sciences and then your subject. Again, I have made a video which shows you how to find your subject guide, which is on these pages. Other sources of help available are the help functions on databases, the help centre on floor 4 of the library and the subject team who can be contacted by phone on 01484 472700 or emailed at library at hood.ac.uk. Thank you for watching this presentation.